This is Radio Free Wall Street with Lee Adler on the web at RadioFreeWallStreet.fm and WallStreetExaminer.com. Hi, everybody. I'm Lee Adler. This is Radio Free Wall Street, recorded Thursday, May 7th, 2014. As you know by now, the worse the economic data, the better it is for the stock market outlook. And the stronger the data, the worse it is for the outlook because it will encourage the Fed to go ahead and tighten as it's been threatening to do for a couple of months now. We've had a lot of data in the last couple of weeks. It's been conflicting. Some has been better than expected, some worse than expected. The conf a lot of the confusion flows from the game of pin the tail on the expectations. When the data misses expectations, the market is disappointed for 15 seconds. And when it beats, then the market goes the other way for a few seconds. But ultimately, none of that matters. The expectations game is irrelevant. There's also some confusion because, as we talked about last week, there's some real problems with the seasonal adjustment factors. We saw that with the GDP data, which I believe was grossly understated. And it may have some effect on the jobs number, which you uh, may have seen by the time you see this video. Uh, the jobs number, based on the strong claims data and the strong federal withholding tax data, should come in very strong. The uh, withholding taxes are now running at a year-to-year -year gain of about 6.2%. That's up from 5.2% a week ago, 5.1% a month ago. So we're starting to see a little more strength in withholding taxes. But they've been running pretty strong all along. And of course, the uh, initial unemployment claims have been at record low levels, way below where they were at the top of the housing bubble. You know, we've got a market where there is a shortage of the kinds of people that employers need to hire, so they're holding on to those people. And we're having a low level of layoffs that are consistent with bubble levels in the economy. We've also had bubble levels of tax collections, including uh, now in for the whole month of April, the fully processed individual income tax collections from April 15th showed about an 18% year-to-year gain. So we've had a bubble level of tax collections indicating that individual tax filers who don't have taxes withheld uh, had a, a, a bubble-like year. You know, they're drinking champagne. The rest of us, not so much. So there have been these strong indications that are likely to keep the Fed on track regardless of what happens with the uh, jobs number on Friday. Now, I think there could be a problem with that. Last week, we talked about the uh, program, the X-13 ARIMA seats program that the government agencies use to adjust the hard data, the actual data, to, to seasonally finagle it, to try to even out some of these seasonal fluctuations. And we know that with the BLS, there's a five-year look-back period. Now, that's a problem because in 2009, which is no longer included in the data, the early part of that year was very weak. So those numbers are coming off. And uh, the 2010 and 2011 numbers were very strong. There was a very strong rebound in those two years. And those numbers are included in the look-back period. And they will skew the seasonal adjustment and have some kind of effect on it. I don't know whether it's going to cause the number to be understated or overstated. We'll just have to see. The consensus expectation is reported at a monthly gain of 218,000. That's a pretty strong number. So if the number comes in around that or a little bit stronger, that's going to probably confirm the market bias that the Fed is set to tighten somewhere along the line in the next couple of months. If it comes in weaker than that, then maybe uh, the market will rally a little bit on the expectation that the Fed will delay tightening. Now, how's the Fed going to tighten? One of the things I've discussed with you is that the Fed probably can't accomplish much in terms of raising interest rates without actually shrinking its balance sheet and getting some of these excess reserves out of the banking system. Now, in order to do that, it can do so by not replacing uh, the MBS that are being paid down. Now, this month, they have a huge MBS 
purchase coming up. They're buying 40 billion in forward purchases. So there's going to be a big settlement coming up in May and June that's going to goose the market in the middle of the month when they settle those purchases. But at some point, they may decide not to replace all those MBS that are getting paid off. And that's going to shrink their asset base and tighten the market a little bit. There'll be a little less cash out there. But the big deal coming up is about 500 billion in treasuries that are going to be maturing next year. Now, they're not going to let all of that mature at once and redeem all that paper and, and throw all that paper back on the market. The Treasury is going to have to sell that paper to replace uh, the fact that the Fed is not rolling it over. So that'll put pressure on the market. If the Fed is not there purchasing the paper, the primary dealers will have less cash to use to, to buy some of the Treasury supply. So that'll put upward pressure on yields and probably short-term rates as well. So all of that is on the horizon. Uh, we can foresee a period of rising rates, but the Fed is probably going to go gently with it. They're going to go very slowly. But I think any action to remove reserves from the system that puts even the slightest pressure on the primary dealers to, to absorb additional treasury supply without help from the Fed is going to pressure all of the markets. Now that's over the horizon a bit. That's a few months down the line. In the meantime, we've had a lot of conflicting economic data. I want to show you a couple of the charts from some of the data that's been released in the last couple of weeks, try to make some sense of it for you, and try to tie all the loose ends together so that we can get a coherent picture of what this economy is actually doing and why the Fed is likely to be behind the curve on a tightening because inflation may be running way ahead of what they think. So we're going to take a look at the initial unemployment claims, factory orders, construction spending, uh, auto sales, and the pending home sales that came out a week or so ago. Some of these things the market doesn't pay any attention to, but that doesn't mean it doesn't tell us a story about what's going on in the economy. And again, when you look at the actual not seasonally adjusted data, you can actually see the trends. You get a much clearer picture of what's going on in the economy than you get from these uh, noisy, seasonally adjusted, headline number, pin the tail on the uh, number kind of game. So let's take a look at those charts. <music> 